Good morning. Welcome to First Methodist Church. <laughs> We're glad you are worshiping at First Methodist Church this morning. Please sign and pass the attendance pad at the end of the pew. If you are visiting with us, we would especially appreciate your name, address, and phone number because we would like to thank you for being with us. I have some more announcements. Um, the youth events. Um, next Sunday, June 25th, there will be a progressive picnic for all youth. Um, we welcome the Bones today. We thank you for being with us and sharing your talents. Uh, we have new member fellowship on July 9th. Um, and the Staff Parish Relations Committee has hired an associate pastor uh, for youth and family ministries. Uh, more details can be delineated after the worship. Senior lunch volunteers, we currently need more volunteers for our Friday senior lunches. And um, there is the helping our children uh, See the, the uh, please note the, uh, the information in your bulletin for that. And with that, um, at this point, if you are able, please stand and join in hymn 715. <laughs> Please join me in the call to worship. God has called us to this place where we, where we hear those stories that show us what the kingdom of God is like. God summons us to this place where we can learn how to serve, serve our God, God without reservation or hesitation. God will send us from this place. You may be seated.
the children want to come forth for the children's moment. So today I brought some things with me. Let's see if you know what they are. Uh, let's see. What do I have first here? What do I have? Let's see. Let's see what they, if you know what they are and if we could maybe figure out what to do with them. Oh, oh, this is something. I bet you guys, I know what lives at your house with you, so I bet you guys have some of this at your house too. Do you know what this is? Here. It's, what did you say? Yeah. You're right, say it again. Here. It's hair. Do you know what the hair is from? have at your house that has, maybe has hair. This is, this is dog hair. <laughs> yeah, okay, do you guys, because you guys have a dog, right? Yeah, you have a German Shepherd. Yeah, we're going to set that right there. He's, he's big. He's a big dog. All right, so what's this? What's in here? Do you know what, can you guess what's in here? Do you know what this is? Yeah. What do you think's in there? This, this, this little pile right here I got out of the dryer. This is dryer lint. And, and this, this little pile right here, this came out of one of the toys that the dogs were playing tug of war with, and they ripped it apart. So this is like stuffing, yeah, from my dog, from my dog's toys. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, I, who, what are these? What do what comes off of flowers? What do the bees like that comes off of flowers? Do you know? They taste them. Yeah, they taste the bees taste the flowers. And what comes off of the flowers? In the spring, it flies through the air when all the buds are coming out. Do you know what it is? Do you know what Sam? Do you know what it is? Yes, it is. Pollen. Pollen. It's pollen. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What is this? Oh. This. Um, this came out of the fireplace. Do you know what this is? It came out of my fireplace. What, am I, what do you think it is? Ashes? Yeah. And then this, I, I just found this on the side of the driveway. Do you know what that is? What? What's that? I don't know. What do you, I bet you do. Come on. We know what that oh, is. Oh. It's white that makes a bunch of What is it? Um, it's what is that? Um, dirt? It's dirt. Yeah. Yeah, dirt. So do you guys think, could we, what, what do we do with all this stuff? Did we do anything with it? Yeah. What do you think? Well, do you know what happens? I, I think it's just kind of what happens if when this stuff sits around too long, it kind of breaks down and then it turns into dust. And what do we do with dust? What do we do? You say it. Clean it up. Yeah, we just clean it up and we kind of throw it away because there's nothing good from dust. But in the Bible, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed man, formed humans, from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So God took dust, a bunch of stuff, nothing, that we just kind of clean up and throw away, and made a human being. How about that? Because he's God, and he created us. Right? Okay, so God made humans out of dust. So if God wants to, when God wants to, he can take whatever mess we make and turn it into something for his purpose. Okay? Let's, let's pray, and then I have something to give you. Can we pray? Can you pray with me? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you, thank you. for dogs and toys. 
God's influence. For flowers and dirt. For flowers and dirt. Help us to remember. Help us to remember. That you created life. That you created life. From dust. From dust. Breathe your spirit. Breathe your spirit. Into us. Into us. Amen. Okay, so I brought you something that will help you. Since, since we're not God and we can't make things out of dust, I, help, I brought something to help you get rid of the dust. We have lint rollers for everybody. All right, there you go. So if you're looking for lint rollers, don't go to the dollar and a quarter tree store because I, I think I bought them all. And here it. And I know you have dogs, so you can have to go for your dog here. All righty, thanks guys. You can go back to your seat. Please join me in the Psalter, Psalm 116 on page 837, and without the choir, we will um, skip the response and read right through 837. Mm-hmm. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and my supplications and has inclined his ear to me whenever I called. The snares of death death encompass me. me. The The pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, the Lord saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, all humans are a vain soul. Please join me in the Gloria. Oh, is there another page? So, Tommy sent me a file, and there was four pages, and I stapled them together, and I now have three. So, it turned the page, Danny. Oh, there's another page of this? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. What shall I return to the Lord for all my benefits? I will lift up a cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to it was in the beginning, is now and shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before we come to our time of prayer, I have just a little bit of a report for you. Mary Jo Zubrod is our lay member to annual conference, but she's out of town this weekend. You will hear a message from Mary Jo next week. There were several others of us who were part of the um, conference this week as lay equalization delegates from the Kane District. 
I am relieved to report to you that on Wednesday, June 14th, at a called special session of the Western Pennsylvania Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, this church was among 297 additional churches approved for disaffiliation from the denomination. Following the vote was a short service of blessing and sending, and it went as well as we could have hoped. There were no parting shots, nor was there excessive celebration. In her message, the bishop encouraged us to show the world who God is through how we will love each other. Following the adjournment, our lay leader, Mary Jo, turned in the check to fulfill disaffiliation expenses and received the quit claim deed for the church properties. We are now part of the global Methodist church denomination, and our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. As we come to our time of prayer, we have a joy. We have a new grandbaby in the church, Carolyn Joy Nelson, born last night to Zach and Jesse Starr Nelson. So congratulations to Mark and Ruth and the Nelson family. Um, and then we just, I just would invite you, I'm going to start with a little bit of a time of silence to pray to God whatever is on your heart. Let's come to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, you are worthy of our praise and honor. Help us to focus our minds and our hearts to worship you. You have created us and you know us. You know, Lord, that we are broken and that we come to you to be made whole. We pray for those who need your help, Lord, for those who are sick or in need of healing, for those grieving a loss, whether it is the loss of a loved one, loss of a job, or loss of a relationship. We pray for those who are seeking guidance. We pray that they could turn their attention to you and sense the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray, O oh God, that our hearts would be open to what you are calling us to do. Help us to meditate on your word and learn to be like Jesus. Guide us and help us to be an obedient church. Pour out your spirit to empower us to listen to new ideas to equip your disciples. As we seek to do your will in this changing world, work through us to seek and to save the lost. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now return to God our tithes and offerings.
Father, we thank you for all that you have provided, and we thank you for new beginnings in the life of this church. Help us to go forward and do and be the light in the world that you want us to be. Amen. Now, continue to stand if you are able and join in hymn number 420. Please be seated. The scripture for this morning is Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 1, and continuing in chapter 10, verses 5 through 14. If you're following along in the Pew Bibles, it's page 885 and 886. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out his workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. The 12 Jesus, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or any town, enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts, no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we are our first Sunday worship service in our new denomination. 
uh, Wednesday after the conference, we were several of us were sitting at dinner, and, and um, someone said, "You get to preach the first Sunday, isn't that great?" And like, that's well, a little bit, a little bit of pressure there, but that's okay. <laughs> um, our first Sunday worship in our new denomination, a growing denomination. This isn't the first time that this congregation or even this building has experienced a similar change. The congregation, this congregation has been in existence and serving God in this community for 206 years. And in four years, this church structure will be 100 years old. In fact, if you go out the doors toward Market Street and you turn left, in that corner of the building is a stone with the inscription, First Methodist Episcopal Church, 1833, 1885, 1925. This church has a lot of history, but we're not talking about the past today, we're talking about the future. The gospel lesson I read is actually the common lectionary passage for today. And verse 13 reads a bit differently in various translations. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. Some versions use the word blessing instead of peace. And then the next verse, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet, it was used to show a separation from someone who had rejected the Messiah. Symbolically, shaking the dust meant that, that the, the disciples had done their job. They had tried. They were no longer responsible for those who rejected the Messiah. And we can learn something from those verses. We have acted faithfully to what we believe God is calling us to do, and we can shake off the dust and let our peace return to us. Peace is one of the fruits of the Spirit, and peace is not the absence of conflict, but rather a sense of tranquility and order, despite what may be going on around us. That feeling of Jesus is in the boat with us. And I would hope that we have that peace moving forward, and I hope and pray that the United Methodists have that peace also. So the phrase, when the dust settles, was used by a member of our congregation to refer to this day, this time. And that phrase, when the dust settles, is used to describe what happens when things become clear or calm after a period of confusion. If you let the dust settle, you let things calm down before starting something new. Friends, the dust is settled. It's time to start something new. This is not the time to rest and catch our breath, but rather to hit the ground running. The first few verses of today's lesson almost have a sense of urgency about them. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. This could almost describe the crowds today, harassed and helpless. Addiction to drugs and alcohol are ruining relationships and lives. So many people are struggling mentally and emotionally, suffering from loneliness and depression. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We don't want this harvest to spoil. We need to get to work. We are all broken in one way or another, but a community of believers who love and care for each other can help people begin to heal. Small groups have played an important role in the Wesleyan tradition. And I'm not referring to small groups that study the Bible or maybe a book um, related to the Bible or some type of small group formed around a common interest, valuable as those groups are. The small groups John Wesley initiated were not about information, but transformation. The small group members strive to hold each other accountable for living as a disciple of Jesus Christ and to discuss how their lives were being transformed by their faith in God. We currently have several of these small groups meeting regularly, and there are plans for more. The idea is to grow the church bigger by growing smaller. It can be intimidating to walk into this sanctuary for the first time, not knowing many people when there are a lot of people here. But if you can invite someone to a small group where they can meet four or five or six other people, and then when they come into this bigger room, see those people there. That can do a lot for our faith. While we can care for each other as a congregation and partner together to help others, we can't possibly be in a close covenant relationship with 100 people. 
The small groups will give us a chance to form close relationships in addition to those we have already. We can learn from each other's relationship with God. When I started putting together this message, I thought of phrases that contain the word dust, and another phrase I thought of was gathering dust, as in something that has been left somewhere and nobody's using it or doing anything with it, like it's just a dust collector. People have good intentions when they get something that ends up gathering dust. Maybe it was exercise equipment, you know, how many have those treadmills sitting in the basement? Uh, some type of machine that they were going to use to create or build something, or a book they intended to read. The same could be said of our faith in Jesus. We had good intentions when we accepted the salvation he offered and became a member of a church. But has our faith in Jesus transformed us? Are we using our faith or doing anything differently because we believe in Jesus? Are we sharing our faith or is it gathering dust? Dust is defined as fine, dry powder consisting of tiny particles of earth or waste matter lying on the ground or on surfaces or carried in the air. Dust in homes is composed of about, this is kind of icky, 20 to 50 percent dead skin cells, in addition to hair, clothing fibers, dust mites, pollen, soil particles, and microscopic specks of plastic. Dust can cause health problems if it is breathed repeatedly, and there really isn't much good that comes from dust unless God decides that something should be made from the dust. Listen again to the verse I read with the children. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. When the dust settles, what if that dust had settled for being dust instead of becoming the living being that God intended? God can take dust, useless particles of nothing, and make a living being. God had plans for that dust. What if God wants to take the dust that has settled around us and breathe his new life into it? What plans does God have for us, this living church here in Warren? God's plans for us are the same plans Jesus had for his disciples. Proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. God's plan for us is to proclaim his kingdom here on earth. You may be thinking, well, the disciples were different than we are. They are holier maybe, maybe more powerful. But were they? When God sent his Holy Spirit on Pentecost, his spirit, the comforter, intercessor, paraclete, advocate. It is available to Christians forever, not just those who were alive at that time. Maybe the biggest difference between the first followers of Jesus and us is that we don't fully believe that we have the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe if we truly believed and claimed that power and expected things to happen when we pray through the Spirit, the world would join us in following Jesus. Freely we have received the salvation of Jesus, and freely we should share that good news with others. Earlier, I mentioned that the mission of the Global Methodist Church was to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. That mission can be the same for all of us, yet be expressed differently through each of us. Passionate worship could be singing praise or playing music, to glorify God to one person. Someone else might worship passionately by spending time in solitude, praying and glorifying God. And I know, and I told her I was going to do this, I, I know that Molly Lachlan spends time worshiping God when she tends to the gardens on the church grounds. She works hard with others to create a beautiful space for worship outside of this church building. And often when Molly's working in the gardens, people pass through, because a lot of people park in our parking lot and the other uh, surrounding parking lots, and people pass through and they stop and they talk with her, which provides her an opportunity to witness boldly. Love extravagantly. When you first think of that word, you may relate the word extravagantly with spending money freely or excessively on someone. But another definition of the word extravagantly is to a large degree and with extreme feeling. It's likely there are people 
who need us to love them extravagantly by spending money freely to help them. And in that case, loving extravagantly may, may take the form of feeding the hungry or clothing the naked. But there are also people who need us to love them extravagantly by spending time with them, listening to them, encouraging them. Mother Teresa is quoted as saying, loneliness is the leprosy of the modern world. Listen to that again. Loneliness is the leprosy of the modern world. Back to verse 8 that we read earlier. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Maybe the way that we cleanse those with leprosy today is by befriending those who are lonely, walking alongside them in life. 1 Peter 4, verse 8 reads, Above all else, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Loving each other extravagantly can do wonders for our souls. Witnessing boldly may be the most challenging for us. While evangelism is a spiritual gift, it is also a directive from Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We can witness by worshiping, by loving, by teaching, and by obeying God's commandments. This is another way that the small groups are helpful. The more you talk about your faith with other Christians, the more comfortable you are talking about your faith with those who are not yet Christians. When we share a faith story with those we trust, we are empowered to share it with others as well. The next few weeks and months will be exciting here at First Methodist. In two weeks, our new pastor of Youth and Family Ministries and his family will be joining us. In three weeks, we will receive new members and celebrate with a luncheon after worship. By the beginning of August, we should know how the circuits in the Allegheny West Conference will be laid out. And we have plans in the works to follow our promptings and begin a community meal to serve those needing a meal or those needing community. Continue to pray and listen to what God is calling us to do to serve him in our community. The dust has settled. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Worship passionately. Love extravagantly. And witness boldly. Amen. Our last hymn is number 529. How firm a foundation. Let's stand and worship God together.
lead us into those, these new times and help us to, to carry out our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extrav extravagantly, and witness boldly every day. Amen.